Should we actually be calling artificial intelligence intelligence augmentation? That's what one OpenAI researcher suggests. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We start today with something that may seem like idle chatter on Twitter slash X, and really it probably is, but I do think it's reflective of a broader struggle to define the parameters of what this artificial intelligence industry really means and what its purpose is in the world. Now, the genesis for all of this was a post from Simon Willison called It's OK to Call It Artificial Intelligence. Simon writes, we need to be having high quality conversations about AI, what it can and can't do, its many risks and pitfalls, and how to integrate it into society in the most beneficial way possible. Anytime I write anything that mentions AI, it's inevitable that someone will object to the very usage of the term. Straw man. Don't call it AI. It's not actually intelligent. It's just spicy autocomplete. That straw man is right. It's not intelligent in the same way that humans are. And spicy autocomplete is actually a pretty good analogy for how a lot of these things work. But I still don't think the argument is a helpful contribution to the discussion. Now, basically what Simon goes on to say is that when it comes to functionally describing and getting the reader into this broad area and field that we're talking about when we talk about AI, that popular designator matters more than precision of scientific definition. And that's certainly something that I agree with as well. Now, one other piece of this, however, is that he suggests a distinction between what we talk about as artificial intelligence right now and AGI. Simon writes, if we're going to use artificial intelligence to describe the entire field of machine learning, generative models, deep learning, computer vision, and so on, what should we do about the science fiction definition of AI that's already lodged in people's heads? Our goal here is clear. We want people to understand that the LLM-powered tools they are interacting with today aren't actually anything like the omniscient AIs they've seen in science fiction for the past 150 years. Thankfully, there's a term that's a good fit for this already, AGI for Artificial General Intelligence. This is generally understood to mean AI that matches or exceeds human intelligence. AGI itself is vague and infuriatingly hard to define, but in this case, I think that's a feature. ChatGPT isn't AGI is an easy statement to make, and I don't think its accuracy is even up for debate. The term is right here for the taking. You're thinking about science fiction there. ChatGPT is an AGI like in the movies. It's just an AI language model that can predict next tokens to generate text. Now, this is where Andre Karpathy from OpenAI comes into the conversation. He quote tweeted Simon's X post about this and said, I'm playing around with calling our tech as it is today, IA, intelligence amplification, instead of AI. IA have the vibe of tools for thought, needing human interaction, and resemble a lot more of what we actually have today. AI feels more like independent long-running agents. Now, Andre went on to expand that, writing E slash IA, intelligence amplification. Does not seek to build super-intelligent god entity that replaces humans. Builds bicycle for the mind tools that empower and extend the information processing capabilities of all humans not a top percentile and faithful to computer pioneers. Now, why would this matter? We are right now in the midst, really just the beginning, but still in the midst of a very important societal conversation around what we actually want when it comes to AI. From the technologist side, there's sort of an a priori belief that we always want more and better technology and that more and better and more advanced technology is always a net benefit to humanity. This is very roughly speaking the accelerationist side of the conversation. On the other hand, when it comes to AI, there is serious pushback. There are more questions now than we've had about just about any of the recent technology movements around how much it's actually serving the interest of people and whether there are reasons to want a meaningfully slowed or even neutered version of this technology. When it comes to that type of debate, language actually matters. Being able to easily say we want this type of a thing but not that type of a thing and having names for each of those things that make them easily communicable can be the difference in getting broad-based public support. It may be that Andre Karpathy trying to define a term that makes it clear that it is, quote, not seeking to build super intelligent god entity that replaces humans is actually much more significant in the future than it seems right now. Anyways, I think it's a fascinating little undercurrent. It's something that I'm going to be watching. I don't anticipate this IA shift to make a big splash or anything. It's more the underlying narrative debate that I see it representing that has me interested. And now to the rest of our stories for today's brief. Staying in the realm of OpenAI for just a moment, Microsoft has picked their executive, D. Templeton, to join OpenAI's board as an observer. You'll remember that as part of the agreement that brought Sam Altman back to the firm, Altman and his ally Greg Brockman agreed not to join the board, at least initially, and Microsoft agreed not to have a formal board member, but they would get board observer rights. In other words, the ability to sit in in a non-voting capacity, but at least have visibility into everything that's happening on the board. D. Templeton has been at Microsoft for more than 25 years. 
and is currently the company's VP for Technology and Research Partnerships and Operations. Right now, the voting board members on OpenAI's board are Brett Taylor, who was formerly the co-CEO of Salesforce and before that at Meta, Larry Summers, who's the former U.S. Treasury Secretary and president of Harvard, famously the president of Harvard when Mark Zuckerberg was going through that school, and Adam D'Angelo, who's the CEO of Quora and who is the only holdover from the previous board. It remains an open question how large this new board will be, and some see it as an interesting proxy fight for Sam's authority within the company in this new version. Now, from a product perspective, OpenAI continues to scream ahead. News reported in TechCrunch today, ChatGPT is finding its way into more vehicles, this time in Volkswagen cars and SUVs. Announced as part of CES, which goes off this week in Las Vegas, starting in the second quarter of this year, ChatGPT will be integrated into Volkswagen's onboard computer for many European models, although they won't be initially in the U.S. Now, VW is not the first auto manufacturer to put ChatGPT in cars. That distinction goes to Mercedes-Benz, who started experimenting with it last June. Now, one company that is also rolling out a chatbot but not ChatGPT for its employees is big four consulting firm Deloitte. Around 75,000 of the firm's staff members are being given access to their Pair D tool. Interestingly, this chatbot was not built in collaboration with some external startup or lab, but was developed entirely internally to Deloitte. The goal of the tool is to help increase staff productivity in areas like answering emails, drafting written content, automating code writing tasks, creating presentations, creating meeting agendas, carrying out research, and more. Now, I tend to see usage of AI inside big consulting firms as a leading indicator of where the enterprise is going in general, because to the extent that those firms actually develop and enshrine new workflows based on the use of AI, the more likely they are to bring those innovations to their clients going forward. You've heard me say it lots of times, but I'm quite sure that 2024 is going to be a year of deep integration when it comes to the enterprise and AI. Last up today, Magic the Gathering creator Wizards of the Coast, which is a subsidiary of Hasbro, is in hot water after using generative AI in a set of marketing materials, after explicitly making its policy that its artists could not use AI in Magic the Gathering related work. Basically, there was a set of images released via Facebook ads that showed cards from the upcoming set inside of backgrounds that were pretty clearly created by AI. When people asked them about this, they said, no, it wasn't created by AI, but then they actually found out that it was. On Sunday, they went full mea culpa writing, well, we made a mistake earlier when we said that a marketing image we posted was not created using AI. As you, our diligent community, pointed out, it looks like some AI components that are now popping up in industry standard tools like Photoshop crept into our marketing creative even if a human did the work to create the overall image. While the art came from a vendor, it's on us to make sure that we are living up to our promise to support the amazing human ingenuity that makes magic great. We already made clear that we require artists, writers, and creatives contributing to the Magic TCG to refrain from using AI generative tools to create final Magic products. Now we're evaluating how we work with vendors on creative beyond our products like these marketing images to make sure we are living up to those values. So a couple things here. One, part of the issue is that Magic had taken this stance against AI in its art. It'd be one thing if the company was throwing open its floodgates and saying, sure, we'll use AI everywhere, but they haven't. They've said that they didn't want AI inside the Magic experience. So of course, this came off as very hypocritical. Second, they're certainly trying to make it seem like it's a process error and has to do with issues with a third-party vendor rather than a mistake that they made themselves. They also tried to point to tools like Photoshop as part of the culprit. Now, on the one hand, this is a story about community uproar and the negative PR costs associated with using AI for a company that indexes high on creative and artistic material like Wizards of the Coast does. And of course... To the extent that the Magic the Gathering community turns this into a more general uproar, there could be meaningful negative costs associated with using AI that offset any productivity gains that they might have otherwise realized. At the same time, it certainly feels a bit like a fighting against the tide. And even the artists who are making a stand and trying to say that they won't work with Magic the Gathering anymore have a little bit of an air of having already lost a battle that they're still fighting. Overall, I think it is an interesting case study and something we're going to see a lot more as 2024 develops. For now, however, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI Breakdown. 